Hi everyone, and welcome to this video tutorial on using Chess.com's Live Analysis Board. Our Live Analysis Board can be used for online coaching, it can be used for any type of group or private lesson setting, as well as broadcasts and video recordings like you see at Chess TV. To access the Live Analysis Board, you're going to hold your mouse under the play icon and enter the Live Chess Arena. I already have it open and I'm ready to show you the next step. To choose the game type, you click on the board button, which is found directly next to the time control dropdown. When I click the board type, I can choose anything from classical chess to wild variants, but also our analysis board option. When I click on the analysis board, I have the default settings to invite only, as most people are doing things just for themselves or they only want to invite a couple set of people. But you can also open up your board to anyone in case you're doing a broadcast at Chess TV or if you just like to allow anyone who follows you to see what opening you're up to looking at that day. We're going to stick with invite only and click start. Once the analysis board is created, we have an entire array of tools here. I'm going to try to show them to you in their order of not only most important to know, but most commonly used as well as the order that makes the most sense. So skipping to the button right here called set position. This brings up actually much more than just setting up the position, a full list of tools. We can check or uncheck legal moves only. You'll notice that right now with legal moves checked, it thinks we're playing a real game. So it won't let me do things like this if I want to set up a new position. But if I uncheck legal moves, I can now drag anybody I want off the board and add anybody else I want at any time. It doesn't need to be legal or illegal. At a certain point, if I'm ready to play, I have to check legal moves again, and as we can see with the box white to move being highlighted rather than black to move, I now have to make a move for the white side. If I uncheck legal moves and maybe even just wanted to reset things back to the beginning, it'll automatically put it back to white to move. Maybe I want to play a game where for some reason black gets move odds. We can click on black, check legal moves, and now for whatever reason, I can't think of why you would ever want to do that, black can go first. Obviously, the pieces here allow you to add or drag anything as you've seen me do. And to continue in our analysis boat mode, I'm going to reset the board and show you how you can draw arrows and highlight things for both students that are observing the game with you if you're doing a lesson. We'll talk about how to invite them in a second. But also for what you see authors doing in both videos and Chess TV broadcasts. Simply use the right click feature on a mouse. And just like that, you have yourself a highlighted square. Hold down the right click feature and highlight an entire diagonal. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right clicking and highlighting away as you go to, to point out any sort of weakness or any sort of idea. Everything you do here can be seen by anybody else who's observing the board, whether you left it open to anyone, so people who are following you, or a student you invited specifically. On that note, let's talk about how to add people to our lesson here. First, I'm going to uncheck our piece palette, our piece tools as I like to call it, and we have the full notation listed. The easiest way to invite somebody is to know our commands. If you click on the console chat for any game you have currently open, again, if you hold your mouse, it tells you that's the game chat, and you type slash invite username, you can invite any new username you want. So you wouldn't type username. In this case, if I was trying to invite Robert Hess to a board that we were doing for Chess Center, like Blunder of the Week, I would do slash username RLH2. If he had one that he started and needed to invite me, he would type slash invite Daniel Wrench. By doing this, you will send an invitation directly to this person that will pop up in their main chat. And by accepting it, it automatically gives them what we call student or partner access. That allows them to also make moves on the board, right click and highlight as they wish. They essentially have full control over everything you're doing outside of what you see in the settings tab. The settings tab, which is the ability to make a board public, change who's invited and who's not, those are things local to you and the owner who started the board has control over those. But otherwise, all the analysis tools we're going to get to are available to every student. What if you forget the slash invite tool? Well, click on the players list, which will tell you exactly who's examining your board currently. Even if you have a board open to anyone and there's 50 people there, it'll tell you all 50 usernames. Click the plus bubble and you can instantly invite any friends. Obviously, I have Alex Yermo as a friend online. We see Brother Josh. We see Grandmaster Melek, staff member JD Cannon, all kinds of people online. I can simply click and add them to the board at any time. And this will also send them a direct invite that if they accept, they will automatically have student or partner access to control and make moves on the board just as I do. So 
Now that we've gone through starting an analysis board, as well as the basic way to either use the command invite or invite someone within the friends user list, let's talk about getting the most out of our analysis board. We can click on this tool here, and as I showed you, it allows you to add pieces, legal moves, those sort of things. But there are two buttons I did not touch on, both the Fen option, allowing you to instantly pl pay, place a position that you have set up, or the PGN option, allow you, allowing you to paste an analysis, an analyzed game with as many variations as you can think. Some people will often be using other tools where they have all their openings stored, things like Chessbase, Chess Assistant, or even if you have PGN stored in Word docs, doesn't matter. We'll use that as an example here by bringing up a, a quick chess space window I have open, a game that I analyzed along with Robert Hess for the, the candidates videos we did on YouTube. I can simply click copy game. I can also just do control C, whatever you want. And when I click copy and then I go back into my live server, I can paste that PGN and just like that, we have the game, the players, it updates the information as well as all of the analysis that Robert and I did. You can also grab a game from our website. Often we're doing game of the day analysis like you see here from Grandmaster Robert Hess with all kinds of useful information, but maybe you wanna go over it where you have a little more control over the board because on this board, you can't move pieces. So you're gonna click our share button, our share media, allowing you to share on any social networking site, share the URL if you wanna email it to somebody, grab the fen of whatever current position you're looking at, that would be the thing you post in the fen box, or grab the entire PGN and press control C or right click and copy, Go back into your live chessboard. Now let's paste a new PGN that will override the one that we had before. Maxime Bashe Legra versus Magnus Carlsen. Once we've got this open and the PGN pasted, probably we're not looking to make the position illegal by adding a bunch of crazy pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that, actually. We will reload the PGN I just pasted, which is what this button does here. Notice I'm holding my mouse over this. That allows you to reload any PGN you pasted in case you do what I just did where you accidentally uh, use a tool to make the position illegal or different. Just reload the last PGN you have. We are automatically storing whatever the current PGN is on our server instantly for you to have access to at any time, both to reload or to download and then save to your own chess space at any time. But I'm gonna get rid of this palette, one, because I don't need those tools, two, because that allows me to see more of this information here. And I can start going through the game. I can click play if I wanna sit back and relax. But most of the time, I know what I'm doing. I'm analyzing this game between MBL and Carlsen, trying to see what happened in this Berlin. Now, one of the best parts about this tool, along with the instant PGN I already showed you and, and the educational stuff you can do that which would be seen by you and any partner or any even any observer in the list, but also you can make a, any move that was not played in the game and it will not delete the move you're currently looking at like a lot of tools on different servers have done before this. In fact, if I make a move like Rook D1 check that was not played like 9H3, which is like, yep, that's what MBL played in this game today, I remember. Instead of 9H3, I, I put Rook D1 check. I can enter Knight to C3 instead of H3 as well as another move for white. And not only is it not going to replace H3, but it's also going to save the move I entered currently or the move I entered right before that, which was rook to d1 as a line. It'll add to the variations as we go, allowing us to make any sort of analysis we want. At any point, we can go back, re-enter the main line, and that analysis and those variations are saved there. So this allows you to really speak freely with a student, not be afraid to deviate from a main game or to analyze things, and not feel that you constantly have to bounce, have to bounce back and forth between your experience with your student over Skype or over whatever you're doing and a PGN service you'd have to save it to. Everything you're doing within the chess.com analysis board is automatically being saved instantly to the server. Don't believe me? Check this out. Now I click on the set position button and go back to PGN. Rather than pasting, I click current. This is a button that grabs whatever the PGN was that we pasted as well as anything we've entered, whatever's currently on the server and brings it here. What you can see is that it's the PGN I pasted initially, but also, the two variations I entered with rook to d1 and the knight c3 line with a few other moves. No matter how complex those variations might get, at any time I could press the PGN button with, in the tools, press the current button, I can pr now press control A, control C, and go paste that into chess space or a word doc or anything I want to make sure I have that PGN analysis saved. So at the end of a lesson with a student, rather than the bounce back between two programs, making sure things are saved, you know the chess.com server is keeping it current for you and you can save whatever all the variations and brilliant opening novelties you came up with with just each other. 
and anybody else in the group session. So we've now gone through some of the cool parts of the analysis board, being able to enter and upload any PGN or FEN, make any moves you want, have it all saved throughout the whole process. You also don't have to click the button I just showed you and get the current button. In fact, if you just click the download button, it automatically downloads whatever the most recent game was on our server, as you can see down here. It's putting that game there. If I was to click on it and open it up in chess space, you would see that the PGN is saved with anything I entered, which is also very useful for you and your students or partners to do at any time. Finally, we're gonna enter into one of the, the coolest features we have that at first seems like not the kind of thing you would need in a lesson as you're the coach and they're the student listening. But you never know, at the end of spending a lot of time on an opening novelty, you might want to submit everything you just did to be analyzed by someone stronger than you. Well, who's stronger than you? Well, we know guys like Komodo and Stockfish, right? The AI engines are stronger than all of us. This button over here on the end will instantly submit whatever the current analysis is, including all variations for computer analysis. You can choose between quick, deep, or maximum, let the computer start analyzing and go through. It will color code the mistakes and inaccuracies for you so that you know. Add anything else it thinks and really leave you with something to take away. It's fun because you may want to blunder check what you just did even after hours with a student just to make sure the analysis is on the up and up. Obviously, I'm not going to sit here and wait for it because this is a game between Maxime Bashi, the and Carlson. Probably not many mistakes and not something we need to do right now. So before I go jump back in, to playing my own bullet games and blunders, not analyzing them later. Let's review what all the tools do. Starting here, we have the download button, which will put everything you see here in a very quick PGN download for you to use and any other programs you want. We have our reset board, which will get rid of everything you did and go back to the clean slate. What if you accidentally press that and now you're frustrated? Well, the reload button, just like the current button that brings the PGN from the server, well, this tracks whatever the PGN was that you as a user last uploaded to the chess.com server, it'll re-upload it for you. That's a service we provide to make sure that nobody loses their hard work during an analysis session. You can re-upload whatever the last PGN was, and it'll keep it for you. This allows you to clear the board, again, setting up any position you want if you went into the piece palette tools and, and decided to start adding some stuff. But again, we're gonna just reload the PGN and stick where we were. The computer analysis option I already showed. And again, the settings option is the things you initially have when you set up the board, like naming the white and black players. Uh, only live chess presenters, which is a staff, uh, let's say access level we give to broadcasters at Chess TV, have the ability to make a board public uh, or set it to premium only. But everything else you'll see everyone has. What does making a board public do since I opened that can of worms? Well, I'll show you. When you're on chess.com, you can click on the observation tool at any moment and see games that we're relaying from different live servers. You can also see the games going on between the top players. As we see, it hasn't taken Hikaru long to jump in and start playing a whole bunch of bullet, which he's doing right now. We can click on that and analyze it, which is also cool to see what happens if you have an analysis board open and a game you're following. Well, now they're right next to each other side by side. You can fill up as many tabs here as you want. Don't believe me? Well, maybe I'll open up another one. You can have as much as you want going, flipping back and forth from your analysis to other things you're following to make sure that you don't miss a second of the action. But again, that make public button, which is found in the settings, will be something that only staff have the ability to do that will make an analysis board show up in this list for people to follow. It only works if the settings are set as open to anyone and not just one person. As we let Hikaru work his way back toward 3250 and beyond, as I'm sure he wants to go to infinity and beyond, we will end our tutorial video here on one final point, which is that if you're confused about where to find the live chess analysis board, remember it's found under the play mouse, live chess, and that's where we get to go choose our game type and choose the analysis board. It is not what you see under learn with analysis. The learn analysis board is something that has very similar tools to everything you just saw me talk about, right? You can upload and download PGNs and FENs and do different kinds of stuff. However, it is only local to you, which in tech speak means only you can see it on your screen. There's no options to be interactive or to upload and communicate with a server. We're not constantly saving your, your games on the server where you can use those current tools, which are really cool. You can't invite others to see what you're doing. It's private and local 100% to you. If you were recording videos using a chess.com tool, you could totally use this and enter things as you wish. But the live analysis board is what's meant for interactive play, students and teaching online, broadcast, and just about anything where you would want communication with our servers to save what you're doing at any given moment. 
Appreciate all of you watching this video. And uh, please get active using chess.com to teach your lessons and uh, to do everything else you would ever need from a live chess analysis board.